Looks like we have a good mix of uh, ServiceNow and Terraform experience on the call today. Um, so let's get started, everyone. Um, if, if anyone joins late, obviously, uh, we hope that they review the catch-up content that'll be posted at YouTube and on the community blog that announced this, um, that was announcing this event. So look for the slides and the other information there. So my name is Aaron Bennett. I'm with the corporate development team here at ServiceNow. And I'm really proud to present the HashiCorp team. Um, Polina is the senior engineer at HashiCorp who's developed this catalog integration and is going to tell you a little bit more about it today. This is a new integration from HashiCorp, and it's between um, uh, HashiCorp Terraform and ServiceNow. So I'm going to turn it over to Polina to give you a little bit more information. And then uh, we'll end this poll so that everyone can see kind of the results so far. There we go. And uh, Polina, take it away. Thank you, Aaron. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Polina Eschemska, and I'm a senior software engineer at HashiCorp. Um, I really want to start off by saying thank you to our ServiceNow hosts for inviting me to this webinar. It's a great opportunity, and I'm excited to share some ideas with all of you. I must take a moment to recognize the incredible ServiceNow community. Um, I think it's communities like this that shape technology through sharing knowledge. So a big thank you to everyone who's joined us for this event. Um, your participation really makes the sessions worthwhile, and uh, it's great to see so many guests here today. Uh, I'm looking forward to our Q&A session, and I'm hoping we can learn a lot from each other. Thanks for having me on board. The results of our poll uh, just came in. Let's review it quickly. Thank you for participating in our polling session. Um, it's, it's very interesting to see the variety of perspectives. So we can see from the poll that um, the first question was, what brought you to today's webinar? Um, most of you uh, actually accepted the invitation from business partners uh, or coworkers, which is very interesting. So networking uh, definitely plays um, a big part in, um, in the ServiceNow community, which is awesome. And the second question was, are you leveraging Terraform and ServiceNow today? And it looks like uh, half of you use ServiceNow and half of you use both ServiceNow and Terraform, uh, which is also um, just amazing to see. Uh, today, we'll be presenting that better together story that will show you how you can take your workflows to the next level um, by using both ServiceNow and Terraform together. So I hope everyone learns something new. Um, to start off, um, I would like to say a few words about HashiCorp. Um, HashiCorp is a well-known player um, in the field of cloud infrastructure automation. We offer tools designed to streamline and automate the deployment, scaling, and maintenance of complex distributed applications. Um, at the core of HashiCorp's offering are eight key products, each designed to fulfill a specific need in the cloud infrastructure landscape. Um, all of them are listed here on the slide. I work on a team that belongs to the Terraform ecosystem. Terraform is no doubt one of HashiCorp's most popular offerings. It has become an industry standard for infrastructure as code. By allowing developers to codify their infrastructure, Terraform makes it possible to manage cloud resources in a predictable and efficient way. It's cloud agnostic. Uh, it mean, means that it works with a variety of uh, cloud service providers, such as AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and many more. It's flexible, it's powerful, it's simple, and that has made Terraform a go-to choice uh, for teams seeking to adopt infrastructure as code practices. Um, my team is responsible for the integration layer, among other things. We own a couple of projects integrating Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise with third-party platforms, such as ServiceNow. Um, we, um, one of these projects that we're working on is the ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform, uh, also known as the Terraform plugin. To describe what it does in a nutshell, um, the app is based on the service catalog and allows you to order Terraform-based infrastructure from your ServiceNow instance. Since I represent engineering, my demo today will be more on the technical side. We will, of course, talk about the product and see what the app looks like from the end user perspective. 
but I will also be providing some technical insights into how this app functions under the hood, which will hopefully help you decide whether it's the right fit for your technical needs. The ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform was initially released in 2019, so it's been a while, um, and it has since then undergone multiple iterations. We've recently released version 2.2 of the app with several new features, and version 2.2.1 is about to launch in the next few weeks. Um, so we are, uh, we've been working on a smaller patch version with a couple of small but impactful updates. Um, who might need this kind of app? This application is particularly important um, and popular uh, among organizations that require limited user access and tighter controls over infrastructure security. Uh, these are companies in the banking, finance, insurance sectors. Um, we've seen great adoption among players in the public sector as well. Um, it is, of course, not limited to those industries and sectors, but uh, th this has been this have been the most um, um, the most important to us. The app gives users the opportunity to request infrastructure without needing access to the cloud provider, um, without needing extensive knowledge about Terraform or the app's core configuration. With all of that said, uh, let's jump into the demo. As we navigate through the demo, I would like to encourage all of you to actively participate by leaving your comments and questions in the chat. Uh, your feedback helps us understand what's resonating, what needs a deeper dive. Um, at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A section where I will address all of the questions that you've posted and uh, perhaps there will be an opportunity for a deep dive as well. Um, so, Please don't hesitate to share your thoughts as we move along. Today, we'll be talking about the ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform. It is an officially certified scoped application developed by HashiCorp in partnership with ServiceNow. It is available as a free plugin in the ServiceNow store. To start with, I'm sharing a HashiCorp developer portal page with the official documentation for the app as well as the apps listing in the ServiceNow store. The ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform leverages the service catalog technology and provides users with custom catalog items that establish a connection between their Terraform cloud or enterprise instance and ServiceNow. ServiceNow and HashiCorp are natural partners as customers rely on ServiceNow for self-service flows and ticketing process, while Terraform is great for infrastructure provisioning. By combining Terraform Cloud with the ServiceNow service catalog interface, cloud platform teams and ServiceNow admins can standardize and scale their organization's cloud adoption. The application is based on the ServiceNow service catalog solution. Before diving into the Terraform plugin, let's take a brief overview of the underlying app first. You could say that the Terraform plugin represents a customized instance of a service catalog. We are looking at the service catalog landing page in the service portal. Since I'm logged in as an admin, I have access to editing and customizing the way it looks. If you've never worked with a catalog interface before, it enables you to set up one or more service catalogs and provides self-service opportunities. The homepage for a service catalog lists the goods and services available to order from that catalog. Every user with a login can view and order items from the service catalog from departments within your organization. These catalog items can include goods, services, and information. Anything that can be ordered individually can be ordered as a catalog item. For example, a laptop can be a catalog item. The catalog landing page provides an interface from where you can access the catalog items, requests, approvals, popular items, recent items, and saved bundles. After placing an order, a ServiceNow ticket gets created and its progress can be tracked by the requester. The fulfillment process may require approvals. Once the order is fulfilled, the ticket gets closed or resolved. That is the basic idea behind the service catalog application. The service catalog for Terraform is nothing but a custom version of a service catalog. Combining Terraform Cloud with the ServiceNow service catalog interface makes it easy for developers to focus on building applications without having to worry about complicated infrastructure configurations. 
ServiceNow admins can offer infrastructure as catalog items. It could be anything from virtual machines to Kubernetes clusters, anything that can be deployed with Terraform. Downstream users, such as app developers and operations teams, gain efficiency by using the ServiceNow catalog request process that is already familiar to them. They don't need to understand much about their cloud provider or Terraform, or even how this app is configured at the core. The application supports both Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise. Many of you know Terraform as an open source infrastructure as code software tool. It enables users to define, provision, and manage infrastructure efficiently and safely using code. Terraform Cloud is an application that helps teams use Terraform together. Terraform Cloud is available as a hosted service at app.terraform.io. It manages Terraform runs in a consistent and reliable environment and has many benefits, which include easy access to shared state and secret data, access controls for approving deployment changes, a private registry for sharing Terraform modules, policy controls for governing the contents of Terraform configurations, and more. If you're a developer or a small team, you can sign up for free. And by the way, the ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform app that we are talking about today will work fine with the Terraform Cloud free tier for the purpose of testing and proof of concept. Paid editions of Terraform Cloud, on the other hand, allow you to add more than five users, create teams uh, with different levels of permissions, and just collaborate more efficiently. So what is Terraform Enterprise? It's a self-hosted distribution of Terraform Cloud. It offers all the advanced features available in Terraform Cloud, but in a private instance, which customers can host themselves. It's easy to get started with Terraform Cloud. There are some great tutorials available uh, on developer.hashicorp.com. Check it out and give it a try. So what do you need to do in order to install the app? The app is available in the ServiceNow store under the name Terraform, published by HashiCorp. You can install it to your enterprise vendor instance for free. No special licenses are needed. The app depends on a couple of other plugins, like Flow Designer Action Step Script, Flow Designer Support for the Service Catalog, and ServiceNow Integration Hub Action Step REST. All these dependencies will be installed automatically when you download the app. You don't have to worry about installing them separately. Once the installation is complete, refresh your browser and type Terraform in the search menu. What I'm showing you right now will be primarily the ServiceNow administrator experience. If you're an admin, here's what you will see. We'll talk about the end user perspective later because it's a different story. The initial app configuration needs to be done by an admin, and here it is. Four submenu modules should pop up. The first one, Terraform resources, lists all tickets opened through the app. It's like a history of your previous orders. VCS repositories, it's the list of your GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket repositories, or any other version control system you might have. Configuration, this is where you will configure a connection between your Terraform Cloud or Enterprise and your ServiceNow instance. And contact support. As the name suggests, there is a link to contact the HashiCorp support team. The first step is to configure credentials. As an admin, you will open the configuration page and create a new record. In order for ServiceNow to interact with Terraform Cloud, you must give it a Terraform Cloud API token. It is recommended that you create a team token. Team API tokens allow access to the workspaces that the team has access to without being tied to any specific user. Team API tokens are designed for performing API operations on workspaces, and this is exactly what we need for the catalog. To manage the API token for a team, in your Terraform Cloud, go to your organization, settings, teams, select the desired team, and use the controls under the team API token header. Make sure the token has permissions to manage all projects and all workspaces. You will only be able to see the token upon creation, so make sure you store it in a secure place. Paste it back in the catalog form. Enter your organization name and hit submit. 
We've recently released version 2.2 of the ServiceNow service catalog for Terraform, which includes enhancements to Terraform configuration testing. Reopen your record. The previously introduced test configuration button now verifies the connectivity between Terraform Cloud and ServiceNow. This ensures that the Terraform credentials provided to your ServiceNow instance are accurate, allowing you to proceed to the Terraform catalog orders with confidence. A successful 200 response uh, from Terraform Cloud or Enterprise is something we'd want to see before proceeding to the next step. The next step is to configure version control repositories. Navigate to VCS repositories and create a new record. You can have multiple repos listed here. Let's say I have a GitHub repository that builds a very simple um, virtual machine in AWS using Terraform. It can be anything, a Kubernetes cluster, a database, a storage bucket, anything that can be built with Terraform can also be exposed as a catalog item in ServiceNow. I'll name it AWS VM. Identifier is your GitHub username slash the name of the repository. Make sure there are no spaces here. And the OAuth token ID comes from connecting your version control system to Terraform Cloud. Terraform Cloud uses the OAuth protocol to authenticate with VCS providers. In your Terraform Cloud, that would be under version control providers. Once you go through the entire authentication flow, the OAuth will be available in the Terraform Cloud UI. Copy the token and paste it back in the ServiceNow form. The rest of the fields are optional. Hit Submit. Finally, we can proceed to the catalog. In the main search menu, type Catalogs. Make sure it's the one under the service catalog and not under system mobile. I already have Terraform catalog configured in my instance, but if you're going through the installation and configuration process for the very first time, click on the plus button in the top right corner and add Terraform catalog with title and image to the UI. The app incorporates 15 default catalog items that enable users to create workspaces with variables, trigger Terraform runs, apply the runs, and delete workspaces. They all can be used as is or customized and extended further. Create workspace, for example, just creates a single workspace in Terraform Cloud or Enterprise. Terraform Cloud manages infrastructure collections with workspaces instead of directories. A workspace contains everything Terraform needs to manage a given collection of infrastructure, and separate workspaces function like completely separate working directories. Other catalog items like create run or apply run can be used to trigger and apply Terraform runs in that previously built workspace. But I think the most popular default catalog item is provision resources with variables, which creates a new workspace with a required set of variables initiates a run in that workspace and approves it by doing Terraform apply. You can provision the infrastructure fully by using that single catalog item. There is also delete workspace for cleanup purposes. Delete workspace would first trigger Terraform destroy on your Terraform workspace, remove your infrastructure completely, and then delete that workspace from your Terraform cloud or enterprise. One of the big advantages of this app is high extensibility. ServiceNow admins have the flexibility to customize the Terraform catalog, utilizing the default items as foundational building blocks to create their own workflows. Admins have access to the entire code base of the app. You can open it in the Studio interface, see all the scripts, and play around with them. One of the most popular customizations that users undertake is attaching their own variable sets. Let me give you an example. As an admin, I plan to give my users an opportunity to order a, a virtual machine in AWS, which means I would need to attach my own custom variable set to the catalog item. Because the default variable set that the app comes with won't work in this case, 
a new custom variable set needs to be declared and attached to this catalog item. Our documentation covers the steps you'll need to take in order to create and pass new variables. In this particular case, I want users to be able to pick the size of the instance. And what about AWS credentials? There are a couple of ways you can pass your cloud provider credentials uh, to the catalog item. You can either attach them here in ServiceNow, or you can create a global variable set in your Terraform cloud. That would be um, in your project under settings, go to variable sets. This is a global variable set uh, that will apply to all workspaces uh, in this particular project. It, it is very convenient and you don't need to store sensitive data in your ServiceNow instance. And that's what I'm going to do here. So far, we've been exploring the Terraform catalog configuration from the ServiceNow admin perspective. What the end users experience will be different as they will need to interact only with the service portal interface. Once the admin work is finished, pin your catalog items to the service catalog so that they are visible in the service portal. You decide which items you want to expose to your end users. In the search menu, navigate to service portal home. In the catalog, look for provision resources with the variables. This is one of our recent items. Let's take a look at the form. You can, of course, rename this catalog item as an admin. One thing I should say about customizations is that it's better not to edit the default catalog. It is recommended that you create a copy of an item and then modify it. And that will minimize the risk of overrides uh, when you upgrade the Terraform plugin to newer versions. First, pick the repository. As you can see, I have other AWS items configured here, not just the virtual machine. You could have multiple repositories building different resources for different cloud providers. Next, uh, Terraform project name. This is new. Uh, this field will be available in version 2.2.1, which will be released by the end of July 2023. If you have multiple projects in your Terraform cloud or enterprise, you can pick in which project you want to build this particular resource. Default project is the default value. I'm going to use service catalog demo, which I've already created in my Terraform cloud. Description is optional. Next is the execution mode. Version 2.2 introduces a new feature to the service catalog for Terraform that allows you to set the execution mode for your Terraform workspaces. There are several modes to choose from. The default value is remote, uh, which executes in Terraform Cloud's infrastructure using a consistent and reliable pool of disposable agents. Another option we've added is agent. Um, agent allows you to run Terraform operations on isolated, private, or on-premises infrastructure. This option requires you to create an agent pool in your organization beforehand and then provide that agent's pool, uh, pool's ID when you order a new workspace through the service catalog. Uh, by the way, Terraform Cloud Free Edition now includes one self-hosted agent. But if you need more than one agent, then Free Edition won't cover that, and you will need a higher tier. I'll go with a remote, and um, I'll go with the smallest instance size. Next, I'm clicking Order Now and the provisioning process begins. Let me switch to Terraform Cloud to see the effect. End users typically won't have access to Terraform Cloud, but everything that happens to their deployment is reported back to the ServiceNow ticket. As you can see, all workspaces will be named after Terraform uh, ticket IDs. This is a default behavior. Switching back to our ticket. Version 2.2 of the service catalog for Terraform contains performance improvements. Among the most frequently requested updates was reducing the number of API calls between ServiceNow and Terraform Cloud. To achieve this, we've introduced additional conditions to the polling mechanism and limited it to shorter intervals. Now, an average Terraform run with a default on-demand polling setup 
incurs only approximately five API calls per workspace compared to the previous 30. Several enhancements have been made to the ServiceNow ticket comments. With the latest update, you can now monitor all of your Terraform run stages and their corresponding timestamps within the ServiceNow ticket interface. And repetitive comments are no longer a concern with the application. Once the deployment job is finished, the final comment in the ServiceNow ticket usually lists the outputs. Outputs come from your Terraform configuration. Anything you want to communicate to your ServiceNow users, you can define as outputs. Usually it's a separate outputs.tf file in your Terraform configuration. In case of virtual machine deployment, it makes sense to output such details as IPs, DNS, and your users will have access to this data in the ticket comments. Looking back at all the comments in the ticket, uh, perhaps it might seem like there are too many messages. You can regulate the frequency of communication between your ServiceNow instance and Terraform Cloud or Enterprise by modifying the polling schedules. There are several places you, where you can tweak those settings. The first one is workflow schedules. Pick the ones that belong to the Terraform application. There should be three records. Let's open the run state, which is the most crucial one. The default value is on demand. However, you can change it to run periodically at a short, regular interval. If you want the ServiceNow instance to follow each Terraform deployment closely and get that feedback in almost real time, this is the place to set it up. And this is what I had for the demo. If your preference is to reduce the amount of calls between ServiceNow and Terraform, you can leave uh, the scheduler to be on demand. Another place to tweak polling schedules is the flow designer. Um, admins will use the flow designer interface for any customizations. Um, this is where the basic flows of the Terraform app are defined. The default value is five minutes. Uh, you can make the interval shorter or longer depending on your preference and the needs of your organization. Finally, to destroy the infrastructure, order delete workspace from the catalog. Pick your workspace ID, which corresponds to the ServiceNow ticket, and hit order now. It triggers Terraform Destroy in Terraform Cloud. Here, the destroy run has begun. After the run is successfully finished, the workspace will be completely removed from Terraform Cloud or Enterprise. You can track the history of your Terraform catalog orders by navigating to Terraform Resources. The table lists all attempts, including errored and deleted items. And that concludes today's demo. All right, that is it for the demo. And we're at almost 30 minute mark. So Aaron, back to you um, for the polling question. Yeah, no, this is a good time to change gears and talk about um, any any deep dive questions anyone has um, in the chat. So before anyone uh, takes off to your next meeting today, I'd like to um, offer you the chance to get in touch with HashiCorp directly afterwards. So if you answer yes to this poll, um, any question you have, whether it be, you know, hey, I want a demo, I want to, you know, um, entitle this on a on a specific instance. I want to understand what the licensing implications are from already a user. Um, any any kind of request um, will be um, you know we'll be able to help you with that through this uh, contact form. So please answer yes if you're interested, and we'll certainly um, make sure that we get that information to Polina and the team um, to get in touch. As you can tell, Polina built the app. She's very technically familiar with it. So you're getting access to someone directly who has uh, intimate knowledge of how the integration works. Uh, you get the, you get a lot out of that contact. Uh, so that's the opportunity to get by attending the live webinar today. Um, so please let's yeah we'll give this a, a few minutes to soak and see if there's anyone else um, currently attending live who wants to answer yes to that question. And uh, we'll go through some of the questions that we got in chat. 
So if you do have other questions, please let us know. Um, and uh, we can we can you know go back through some of the content, um, step into an instance, whatever whatever plan that you think uh, would make the most sense. So really quick, uh, first question was a uh, just a housekeeping question about whether the recording in PowerPoint will be shared. Uh, yes, there's a the registration page for the webinar. Um, all that content will be posted afterwards. It'll also be available on our YouTube uh, community page for ServiceNow. So. Um, either or, if you want the sharing link, uh, that'll be a YouTube link that's embedded in that blog, um, and that'll be up um, hopefully today or at least by the end of this week um, at, at, the, at the very latest. Um, it comes up pretty quickly. And the second question was, can this uh, plug in this new this new app on the store be enabled on a personal developer instance or PDI? And yes, it can, but you have to actually contact HashiCorp about doing that entitlement. So that can't be requested through the store. Um, it has to be requested directly from uh, HashiCorp. And there's a couple of entitlements available for PDIs. And um, if you're working with them, they can they can do that for you. And then Polina, I'll turn this question over to you. On the ServiceNow side, um, any additional licenses needed on the ServiceNow with the app downloaded from the store? I believe this is um, available to all ITSM customers. So if you're a platform customer, with access to service catalog, you should be able to uh, use the app. Um, Polina, how about on the Terraform side? On the Terraform side, you will need Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise, because as you've seen uh, in the demo, one of the first steps uh, in configuring the app is providing the API uh, token to your ServiceNow instance. That's how you make it communicate um, to Terraform and back. Um, so that's a big requirement. and. Uh, the demo also covered uh, a couple of underlying plugins that the app uses under the hood. Flow Designer uh, is one of the most important ones. So access to the Flow Designer is definitely needed. Um, but as far as I'm aware, it, it it's not a special license or anything like that. And all um, dependencies are being installed automatically uh, when you download the app from the ServiceNow store. Yeah, um, that's a good point on Flow Designer. It there is a base tier of Flow Designer that's available to all platform customers, which I believe is what Lena you you made a dependency in your app. So that is something that is not you know uh, an additional subscription, but you would have to have your admin admin install that for you if it's not installed already on your platform. Um, so another question, I think more of a technical question, is uh, from Shiva: How you got the um, VCS repositories in the app? So the, yeah, okay. that, I think if I understand correctly, uh, the question is about whether you can um, use attach VCS repositories um, and use them with this integration. That's actually the only way uh, you can make your repositories work um, with the app. Um, the, all the workspaces provisioned through the app are of VCS type. Um, so uh, definitely if you have multiple um, version control repositories where your Terraform configuration is defined, where you build various resources for multiple different cloud providers. You can all you can connect them all um, to your ServiceNow instance. You can attach them to your Terraform cloud organizations. And then you can expose all that work as a catalog item um, in the ServiceNow for your end users. And they can just order those items um, in a user-friendly interface that um, the service portal provides. Uh, any other questions on the demo content? Any curiosities on like uh, what can be what can be done with uh, you know any other use cases with Terraform that other than what you saw today? We'll check the questions. I don't see anything in the Q and A. So, Polina, is there any other content or um, you know what's next for HashiCorp that you'd like to cover real quick before we close out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, um, at the conclusion of today's demo, we absolutely don't want the conversation to end here. If you have additional questions, thoughts, ideas um, after the webinar that you would like to explore further, we invite you to reach out and connect with us. Uh, our team is more than happy to engage in deeper discussions, clarify any points from the webinar, um, or simply chat about you know, broader concepts related to the topic. Don't hesitate to get in touch. There are a few ways. If you are an existing uh, service catalog customer, 
um, you can always email support at hashicorp.com. And um, for everyone else, if you're not a, a, an app user just yet, maybe you're on the fence, maybe you're just considering different options, um, please feel free to post your questions uh, on our forum. It's a public forum uh, at discuss.hashicorp.com. Uh, please make sure you tag your topics uh, with ServiceNow tag. That will help us route uh, your question to the right audience. All right, what's next? Um, looking ahead, the future is filled with exciting opportunities and developments. First of all, we do plan to update the service catalog for Terraform plugin with new features. We are committed uh, to maintaining the app and extending it further, so there will definitely be new releases. And we've also been working on another application, the GA of which is planned for the end of July. It is called the ServiceNow Service Graph Connector for Terraform. Uh, as the name suggests, it's one of the apps in the Service Graph Connector family, but designed specifically for Terraform. Just like the Service Catalog application uh, we discussed today, the second plugin also connects your ServiceNow instance to Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise. And while the catalog application is designed to provision infrastructure, the service graph connector for Terraform pulls resources uh, from Terraform Cloud or Enterprise and imports them into the ServiceNow CMDB. Uh, CMDB is Configuration Management Database in ServiceNow. Uh, if you haven't worked with CMDB before, it's a central repository within the ServiceNow platform, which provides a single source of truth for your infrastructure and it offers configurable dashboards for monitoring and reporting. Um, so this new app will help you manage and search for your Terraform provisioned resources and give you a comprehensive view of the resources and infrastructure that your team supports. Um, the app uses Terraform state file as a primary source of data. So it won't make any requests to your cloud provider. Um, and the entire communication is uh, between your ServiceNow instance and Terraform Cloud or Enterprise. That makes this app different from some of the existing solutions on the market. Um, you can configure the app in such a way that as soon as your deployment finishes in Terraform Cloud, uh, an import gets triggered and your resources will be populated in CMDB dashboards. Um, the app supports selected resources from four major cloud providers. Uh, we support AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, and VM VMware vSphere. And uh, we've included some of the most popular resources from various categories, such as uh, compute, like your EC2 instances, networking, security, storage, like buckets, databases of various kinds from various cloud providers. You can use both apps side by side uh, I like to think about the service catalog for Terraform as a write operation. So it's creating, provisioning new infrastructure, while the service graph connector for Terraform would be a read operation, uh, importing your infrastructure in, into ServiceNow CMDB for monitoring and reporting. Um, you can use the app separately, of course. It all depends uh, on your business needs. So I encourage you look for um, look, take special note of the dates because um, uh, there will be updates coming. There will be a release um, for that um, service graph app for CMDB, and we will do another one of these events. So um, please check back on live on service now for uh, more HashiCorp content um, that's upcoming, and uh, we're excited to bring you that. Um, bring back Polina again for another um, for another demo. And uh, and show you that uh, that application when it's finished. That's right. We will have at least one more demo and uh, exciting learning opportunity lined up uh, for you in the near future. So uh, we encourage you to stay connected with us and please keep an eye out uh, for our upcoming events. Right. And I don't see any additional questions in the chat. So uh, we both like to thank you so much for attending today. Um, yes, please, again, check back in the blog for the updated content. Please share that with anyone you think would be interested. Uh, please get in contact with Polina if uh, you're interested in deploying the app. The objective of these sessions is to um, you know, show you solutions that you may not have known existed between our two technologies. And um, the, the ideal outcome there is that we deploy this app in an environment and make it successful. So again, thanks very much for attending today. Uh, Polina, let's, uh, let's sign off.
Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everybody.